in this camp after your experience of the, the last couple years now? Oh, uh, yeah, a lot more more comfortable. Um, I would say it's more like just confident in, you know, understanding the offense, what's expected of me, uh, and just being able to play a lot more free and not being in my head or worrying about making mistakes. How different does this uh, wide receiver room look, you know, with A.J. gone and now, you know, Robert and Traylon coming in? Yeah, I mean, it's different, definitely a bunch of new faces. Um, it's been awesome so far just being able to work with everybody. I feel like everybody works well together, pushes each other. You know, I mean, y'all were out there at practice today. I feel like there's a lot of energy within the receiver room, and, you know, everybody kind of fuels each other. And so Rob makes a good play, and everybody else is feeling good. Trey makes a good play, everybody else is feeling good. And, you know, I feel like that is, was kind of contagious today, and hopefully keep it keep it going into the camp and in, into the season. Does Kyle maybe have a, a little bit of a unique skill set amongst you guys? As, as a, You guys have a lot of big receivers. As a smaller guy, mm -hmm. it separates on short stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's, I feel... I feel like that's kind of throughout the league, you know, you got slot guys like that and Kyle, he makes plays and, you know, he knows what he's good at and I feel like he's been doing a good job and just got to keep working and get better. How much different are you maybe size-wise, strength-wise from maybe when you first came in the league? Myself? Right. Yeah, I mean, strength-wise, just like balance, being able to fight pressure and not getting pushed off my route, you know, is easy. Um, Speed-wise, just feeling more confident. I feel like part of that, I had the speed coming in, but I was in my head so much that I wasn't able to just cut it loose and, and run. Um, just feel a lot more confident overall coming to this year. Brady said that with you doing more at receiver now than you did your first couple of years, that there may be a chance that they'd have to lessen your special team's responsibilities. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about that? Because that's one of the places you've really made your mark. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely where I wanted to make my mark, but you know, going forward, I'd love to, you know, catch the rock. I feel like everybody growing up, you're as a receiver, you want to catch touchdowns and make catch touchdowns and make plays. But, you know, I'm going to try my best to be be a good receiver here. And, you know, if they need me on special teams, I'm still going to, you know, love that role too. What has Robert brought to that room just as a leader and a guy who's been through so much in the league? It seems like he can kind of watch each of you kind of talking with him at times during practice. Yeah, I mean, like I said, he's just kind of like a, a catalyst right now. Like, you know, he's been in the league for a while, but he still has that hunger, um, you know, to, to get better and to learn. And I feel like that's contagious in the room where everybody's, you know, trying to figure out, you know, the best ways to learn the offense, you know, details of routes and, and different techniques that, you know, he's, you know, been able to learn over his years and definitely still has it. So it's been awesome having him in the room. How much do you feel you know what Ryan wants on a particular route these days, and do you kind of help translate to that, that to other guys too? Like Ryan really likes this here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely just trust built over time, and you know, this off season over the last couple of years, uh, just knowing by him, by Ryan communicating with us, like, hey, on this route, like, the most important thing is you're here, or you know, that you're in this landmark, whatever it is. Um, and it's been awesome just to see that this spring. I feel like there's a lot of growth there and, and everybody kind of being on the same page of what he, run, he, what he wants. What kind of trust do you think that you have gotten from Ryan over the last year or so? Couple years? I think it's you know definitely grown since the first year. I'd say there probably wasn't much the first year. Uh, that's mainly on my part. But yeah, I, I definitely, I'm, I'm happy with where it's at, but I'm also looking forward to, to it growing in the future. And it's going to take you know this camp time and, and building that trust to, to keep that going. Sorry, it's trailing develop that with with Ryan is it all between them or do you also get involved as a veteran now and you know and help a young guy like that come along in that way yeah I feel like it's kind of like what I was saying earlier just being able to tell you know Traylon like hey this is what Ryan Ryan really wants on this play and I feel like that communication already happens between them and you know Ryan's good about you know coaching everybody it doesn't matter if it's me you know first round pick or undrafted guy you know he's gonna hold everybody to the same standard what do you think about his Skill set, Nick, just from what little you've seen of him so far, trailing, mm -hmm. and and uh, also, you know, it seems certainly like there's been a pretty significant change from off season to the first few days here at training camp. Wondering if you could talk about that a little bit, also. Yeah, I mean, he's got a great skill set. Everybody can see it. You know, he's a strong physical receiver. Also has some speed and great hands, and that, you know that's what every receiver needs. And it's been awesome seeing him make plays out there, especially today. Uh, and I just can't wait to keep keep seeing what he's going to be doing. <laughs> he can fake it. Harold, going into this season, you've got the contract. What is there one specific area of your game you're trying to work to improve this year, or is it all facets? Uh, 
Yeah, I would say it's all facets. Um, I'm trying to make a more of an impact when I'm out in coverage, but I'm also trying to uh, be more consistent, uh, just winning one-on-ones um, when the opportunity presents itself. Uh, but I'm just trying to improve my game overall, just trying to be the best, you know, that versatile, productive player uh, that I know I can be consistently too. You talked about pass coverage. Is that does that feel like a, a sort of natural movement to you, or is that something you've really had to learn over the course of your career? Uh, I would just say it's something I had to learn over the course of my career. I didn't really do it much in uh, in college, um, but uh, you know, working with uh, our coaches um, throughout my career here, I feel like I've taken a step every single year and uh, trying to take another step this year. I mean, is it unnatural to take your first couple steps backwards? Is is that a strange feeling the first couple times you do that? I was a couple years ago, but I mean now it's like. That's kind of like the expectation, you know what I'm saying? If I pride myself on being versatile, that's something I got to be able to do. What do you guys get out of uh, non-pad workouts, Harold? What are, what are some of the things you try to work on most and, and you know, maybe vice versa? What do, you, what do you look forward to about getting into pads? And um, yeah, I mean, the non-padded practices uh, to me is about uh, improving on technique and fundamentals, uh, playing with your hands. You're not necessarily going to go right down the middle of somebody, but you can focus on keeping your hands inside and working different moves, um, stuff like that, and making sure you're supposed to be where you're supposed to be with certain play calls. Um, and then when the pass come on, then that's about tying it all together um, and playing physical. What do you think of the Guardian uh, cap? Taylor said it's a little bit heavy. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I see about that is, you know, hopefully when we take it off, you know, it makes my head feel lighter. I mean, <laughs> I don't really, I'm indifferent about the caps. What do you, what do you focus on in camp and make sure you're ready for the season? Uh, just coming out here and improving every single day, um, not taking anything for granted, and just coming out here focusing, taking it one rep at a time, and just trying to improve. You know, that's all you can do. What's the next step you think for you in terms of as a player? Uh, I would say just going out there, you know, proving that I can be, you know, that consistent, dominant, impactful player that I know I can be, um, and just you know, being a guy that the the team can depend on to go out there and make plays every Sunday. From you, the word he used was consistent. As a player, like how much pride do you take in that being kind of your label? Yeah, no, it's definitely um, versatile, productive, and consistent. You know, those are three things that you know I really pride myself on. And um, I'm not really a guy that's up and down. I try to you know stay the same. Uh, I try to improve on all my weaknesses and just keep maximizing what I do best. Um, and you know, really just staying humble, coming out here, trying to improve every single day. And then when I take the field, you know. Show people you know what I got. You've worked in the past on like adding more tools to your toolbox. So are, are you at a point now where it's all about honing in what it is you have, or are there still new things that you're looking to develop? Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm still trying to maximize the things that you know I do well, but also trying to add things to my game in, bo in both the, the pass and the run game. But, but no, nah, I mean, I can always improve. Like, there's plenty, there's plenty of improvement that, that I can make. I mean, you know, and like I've been saying, you know, that's the exciting part. You know, I'm able to go out there and be productive, but with still areas to improve in, um, that's exciting for me. And that's why, you know, I'm excited to come out here every day and and, and work on those uh, things that I need to work on. How much you talk to the pads? How much has this ramp up period got you guys ready for when the pads do come on? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the the ramp up period is a uh, is important um, because you know. No matter how hard you're training, you know, you know, away from the building, when you get back here, I feel like you need that ramp up period, um, especially, you know, with the amount of reps, you know, you get throughout practice, you need that, that build up period. So, you know, I think it's helpful and beneficial. And I think Braves does a, you know, him being a, him used to, used to be, you know, be a player, I think it definitely, uh, that helps him make decisions. And I think he does a great job taking care of us, making sure, you know, we're getting the amount of work we need to get in. How much you try to encourage Rashad Weaver last year, we were sitting out, heard, and, and what have you maybe seen from him early in camp? Uh, I think he had a great mindset, um, you know, with dealing with that. And, you know, I'm excited to, to see him out here every day. And I just feel like he's been making strides ever since he's got here. You know, I'm excited to watch him play. Uh, you think Jeff just, you know, he, he has the stuff he's dealing with on the side, but he's out there. He's leading. I mean, he's always ramping up. And what does it mean to have a guy like that leading the defense? Oh, no, nah, I mean, it's amazing. Like, he sets the tone for our defense. Uh, he's absolutely one of the best leaders that, that you're going to find. Um, and, you know, <laughs> I'm excited as hell to have him, you know, be able to line up next to him. Uh, he's a great player, but he's also a great person. Um, and he backs up, you know, everything he says. So, you know, that's what you need out of a leader like him. You mentioned it in the spring following your contract extension, but having that front four back, how excited, especially these last couple of days being out there with him, you know. Oh, no, nah, it's awesome. And, I, you know, I feel like it's rare to be able to, 
you know, I've been blessed to be able to play in this defense and have these same coaches basically, you know, throughout my career, which has been amazing. Um, but to be able to come back with the same front forward, to keep just building on that chemistry that we that we finished off the year with last year, um, and, you know, everybody's like ready to go, and it should be an exciting time. We just got to keep, you know, focusing on coming out here and improving every day, and uh, it should all fall into place. Yeah, but it looked great to me. Appreciate y'all. Kevin Byard, you know, being the the oldest guy in that secondary room, what do, you know? What does he bring, not just on the field but off the field for you all? Well, there's been a a, a large amount of consistency, you know, at a, at a high level, um, winning football. Um, just day in and day out, I can I can always appreciate that his consistency, the way he approaches the meetings, he's focused. Um, his willingness to to do whatever we ask him to do, or his willingness to help uh, young players, uh, you know? and so that's you know, can't say enough good things about just his daily approach. With Amani Hooker and Kevin that tandem, how much did Amani's return last year from injury kind of help solidify the back end of the? Well, defense? I mean, we feel you know really good about those two guys, and, and hopefully continue to develop you know guys. But it is nice when you have. Guys that has you know played a lot and made a lot of checks, both you know very comfortable and can can play all the techniques that we ask them to do. Whether that's in the deep part of the field, that's down uh, man coverage, and and that's um, you know, that's just an asset having two two guys that are versatile. A little bit different this year. Is there any difference? In Every year is different, right? What do you think of Stonehouse so far, and and how serious a competition you see between he and? Well, I mean, I think it's all. It's, hopefully, there there's as much competition throughout the roster, um, you know, as possible. And I know that that's not the case at every single position, but you know, there's certainly you know we brought these these young guys in here to to compete, and and Randy and Brett have both done a nice job to start camp. Obviously, you know, Caleb's um, not out there yet, but. You know, Stoney's been been punting, and and they're gonna you know compete through camp. You Mike, what have you seen from the punting game a couple times last year that you were disappointed in it? Brett's been so consistent for so long, but was, was last year a fall off from your perspective? Uh, we're just gonna focus on where we're at this year, and um, you know try to evaluate him through the the opportunities in camp and then the preseason. What have you seen from AJ Moore um, so far? Um, and just kind of what does he maybe give you guys? Well, he comes in with, with energy every single day that he comes into the building. There's, uh, you know, he, he loves football. He loves being around, you know, everybody. He loves practicing, practices with, with great speed. And, um, you know, has, always, has been, a, you know, an excellent special teams player and then continuing to work now within our defense of, of trying to find a role um, at, at safety and then at various spots on, you know, sub, substituted defenses. Taking and running with the ball and checking it down and running with it, uh, or do you want to see him maybe try to force something or throw the football? No, I mean I don't want to sit there and have him throw interceptions. I want him to to work through his progression and make the correct decision. Um, you know, if we evaluate the tape and it looks like, you know, he he had you know one of his first two progressions, you know, or reads. <clears throat> we'd certainly want the ball to go there, but if not, then you know that's what you have to do is you have to progress through. And sometimes guys' progression is, is being able to extend plays outside the pocket and, and being smart with the football, keeping your eyes downfield, making great decisions, and then you know protecting the football and, and, and yourself as well. I talked about some of those offseason. Uh, Receiver-wise, you know, kind of like the back end there, you know, Fitzpatrick, Racy McMath, Josh Malone. How have they looked to you so far? Well, I mean – I don't know if there's a back end, you know. I mean, that's that's Teron Davenport's uh, opinion. I think we're going to try to give everybody an opportunity to go out there and make an impact. Josh had a good spring. See if he carries it over here. Uh, Dez has worked hard, and you know, Racy's you know continuing to develop. And you know, we, we like his size, his speed. Those guys are all they all have good size, and you know, Dez has you know done some good things here in the first couple of days, but. You know, it's a long, long camp and a, and a long evaluation. Do you have 
mentioned just how much he's learned from Robert Woods in the past month or so, just all the advice he's taken. He can go to with him with any questions. Just how valuable, you know, is it to have a guy like Woods, a vet, in there that can pass on that info? Well, we like to have that at every position, and, and obviously, you know, Robert's uh, done it at different places. So when you do it at different places, that means that you've been around other players and, you know, other coaches and can always add and, you know, bring professional initiative to not only the meeting room, but to an individual that, um, you know, hey, I struggle with this too. You know, I think there's a, some amount of empathy that, that some of these veterans have for the younger guys and saying, hey, I can remember when, you know, I struggled or I dropped the ball or I went through this. And, um, you know, it's great to have, have Robert here with us helping, you know, the group and, and not the rest of the offense. The twisting and the torque that come with pads and contact next week, how much did that change things for Robert and Caleb? Um, and and does, does it turn into a new things in terms of monitoring them? And, and um, Yeah, I mean, I think we'll just kind of take it a day-by-day -day basis and see how they feel, see how they um, respond to, to today. You know, there was much more work today than what maybe there was in the last couple days. Um, you know, and then we'll just see. But I, I don't think, you know, I don't. I'm not anticipating there be a big uh, turnoff you know, or change from where uh, we were with pads or not pads. When will you be in pads first? I guess the first day is Monday, right? It's uh, Sunday will be off and then Monday. Hey, you know, the first guy guy. Go ahead. I thought we were talking about how his first couple days of, of OTAs were really difficult for him coming back from injury. How have you seen him progress and where's his fitness level right now? Well, the fitness level is better. Yeah, th that was it. The conditioning was something that you know, you can't replicate uh, being out there. And then it was hot, the hottest days, some of the, that we've had uh, this year. And he's worked through that. He came back in good shape. And, you know, he, he expects himself to play um, with great effort. And that's kind of been his strength. And, you know, to do that, you have to be in condition. So um, you got to go through the pain and uh, of getting in shape. And, and he did that. Sorry, Jimmy, what do you got? Yeah. Is this the first day Woods been in 707 since he's been with you? And is that no. Of the, okay. No, it's not. Um, you know, just just gonna. Those guys have been held out of one on ones as of now, and uh, but everything else has been full. You spent some time over with the tight ends during individual periods. Uh, how or what have you seen from Chig and Austin, and how has their relationship with Ryan kind of developed since when they first got in the building? Well, it's improved because you know, neither of those players were here last year, so it's it's obviously improved. It with a low baseline, but. Um, you know, trying to build a relationship of where the quarterback wants you, you know, on certain routes that they run. and um, But they're going to have to block for us. They're going to have to, you know, they're going to have to be able to help us in the run game as well. So, you know, that's a large part of what those guys do. You mentioned DeMarcus yesterday as, as one of your offseason guys. Some things in particular uh, that stood out for you that, that you like about his game or that he did during the offseason there? I mean, he came in, worked. You know, we kind of signed a... You know, after the start of the program, could only evaluate him uh, in the time that he was here. So, um, worked hard, brought energy, you know, got here early, stayed late. Um, you know, sometimes after, you know, practice or running and you don't really, you know, the lift isn't an intense and he, you know, was able to bring an intensity level to that. Uh, worked hard to, to learn our system, you know, coming from where, you know, Houston last year. And so, that's all we can do is evaluate them, you know, while they're here. And so he showed certainly the effort and the daily consistency and, you know, imp improved in, in the techniques that we were coaching each day. Has Lucina been a guy that's really made a, made, first made his mark here on special teams and has become pretty good at it. As he has ascended as a receiver, do you have to monitor his special teams use now more or lessen his role at all? Well, maybe some of the, you know, the more that he plays, maybe some of the downfield stuff. And as we, you know, begin to get, you know, some guys in, at Gunner, you know, that, that, you know, can really, you know, make that their role, their primary role, then, you know, Nick Mayer may not be out there as much. Maybe, you know, maybe he's out there on some plus 50 punts. And, you know, we ask everybody uh, to, to, to play a role on special teams at some capacity, uh, whether that's corners that are trying to hold up the Gunner, the Vice, and, you know, sometimes, you know, coming over on the other side are receivers that play Gunner and, you know, there's tight ends that are involved. So, um, you know, right now, just trying to see where everybody kind of fits, and maybe maybe that does decrease. I, I'm not really sure. When we talk
talked to Harold this past spring, he had talked about kind of, you know, wanting to evolve a little bit more as a, as a leader from different standpoints. So far, now that you guys have been back in the building, what have you seen from him? Uh, you know, Harold's always been pretty consistent and, you know, his, his personality is not going to change. I think that, you know, I, I wouldn't say you, he's a voice that you hear a lot, and but that's okay. You can lead and with his consistency and, you know, his his play and his style. And, you know, I think it's good. He's, he, you know, he studies, you know, rarely makes uh, mental mistakes and, you know, rarely makes the same mistake twice. So I think that that's something that's a positive, you know, impression on, on some of the other guys. And, you know, he's been here for a few years, so he kind of knows what to expect and knows the program. And, um, you know, we ask him to, to do a lot of different things and play a lot of different spots. Coach, what has it been about Logan Woodside the last few years that's given you guys faith that you could rely on him when needed, even though you you haven't really needed him in games and you don't you haven't seen him in that kind of situation? Yeah, and I mean nobody studies more. Nobody, um, you know, we ask a lot of the quarterbacks to get us in the right plays, and um, you know Logan's been been great at it. You know, we brought in some competition last year, and you know he separated himself just with being able to. To, to run our, our offense and operate our offense and, um, you know, needs, you know, needs to continue to, to improve, you know, we're, we're going to try to, you know, get both of those guys ready and the ability to compete with him and Malik. So, you know, Lo Logan's just, you know, he's competed against every guy that we've had in here. What have you seen from Taylor Lawan and the offensive line so far? Um, well, I think that they're getting in great shape. I saw them finishing today. These guys, we ask them to finish downfield, and you know they're not going to win every single block. That's that's not realistic. But you know, hopefully, we're, they can win those one-on-one -on -one matchups in effort and, and getting the ability to finish downfield. Um, you know, I felt like you know we don't have pads on, and you know with the third down stuff that we had, I you know looked like the protection was was good, good enough to get some passes off. And you know, there's a few blitzes that maybe got us, but. You know, we'll take a look at the film, and um, but I know they they they're going, they're they're going hard, and, and I think there's improvement with with some of the stuff that we've asked them to do, whether that's you know in, in certain pass protections or certain play actions. So um, we just got to keep working, and then when the pads come on, I guess we'll we'll have a better idea. How much you'd like the competitiveness in the fight? Maybe guys working through contacts on those one on one drills with receivers and, and DBs, and do you overlook some of the contact there? Um, because it gives your offensive players a chance to fight through well, it? Well, I mean, I think we do a good job, uh, a very good job of trying to take care of each other. I don't think that there's anything that's that's malicious. Um, you know, without pads on, you certainly want to want to be mindful of, of trying to stay up, but also playing a football, you know, trying to teach them the rules of, you know, if you're playing a football and you're, you're going through the side of somebody, you know, that, that's going to be okay. If you're going through the back of them, then that's a penalty. So um, we, we always want to stay up. We want to practice fast. We want to stay away from the quarterback. Um, and, and we would like to avoid, you know, some of those collisions without pads on. And But you know that sometimes those, those are unavoidable. How do you feel inside the building, outside of practice so far, the professionalism of the team has gone in camp? Uh, good. I mean, we don't have too many issues. I mean, guys that, you know, we ask them to communicate if something's going on. Um, you know, I ask them if, you know, they need a couple minutes to, to collect their thoughts if something is, is going uh, sideways in, in their life, which sometimes happens with all of us. Uh, ask them to communicate. I'd much rather have, you know, somebody take care of a personal situation uh, than go into a meeting, you know, with that on their mind because I don't think that's going to get anything accomplished. Um, you know, we don't have to chase a whole lot of guys down to get, you know, get lifts in and things like that. So, you know, until I see otherwise, I, I mean, we we got a great group of guys and, um, you know, everybody's pretty accountable. Degree last year coming off that ACL and Taylor on in different sides of the ball, but now both healthy at the start of camp. I would assume has to be a good feeling just to have those guys leading, whether it be by example just on the field or just boisterous like how Taylor is. Uh, as many guys as we can have out there, Kayla, the better. You know, as many guys as we can have, um, you know, the better. And then I'm excited. You know, it seems like both those guys have gotten off to good starts. Um, and how they feel and, and how they've been moving around.